Hello and welcome to Garage Gaming, and this time's Garage Game is Microsoft Train Simulator, which, for the better part of the last 10 years, I've been completely unable to run. And, to be honest, I haven't really had much compulsion to run either. However, I did pick it out of the garage just to see if it was worth investigating. And, there are a few surprises. But something that's not very surprising is how many people moaned about not being able to run it. But there is a way, dependent upon your graphics card. Yes, NVIDIA still supports DirectX 7. Anyway, here is the menu, and to be honest, it looks far worse than I remembered it being from back in 2006, when I would have been 12 years old. Now, this game is running a rather unusual 1280 by 1024 resolution, which I don't even know what ratio that is. But this is the route that I really got stuck into, partly because I really was a sad adolescent, and these trains reminded me of the then outgoing A60 stock on the London Underground. Now, as you can see, I'm getting going, and the first thing to note is how slow and unresponsive the controls are. You really have to be holding down on the keys for a long time in order to get the controls to do anything. Now, I'm coming into this station, and fortunately, one good thing about this train sim is that it does allow you to practice the art of smooth braking, which... Uh, as you can see, I'm feathering it slightly there. So we pulled into our first station, and I've hit enter to open up the doors. Now there's no door open and close alarm on these trains, or certainly not in this simulation. So it's really up to you to hit enter twice and then continue as you were. Now we're setting off. And the next station isn't very far away. As you can see on that window at the left-hand side of the screen, it tells you when the stations are coming up with the little blue blob in the middle of the track. And again, like before, I'm feathering the brakes really, just to provide somewhat of a smooth braking experience. For 2001, I'd say the graphics are passable. It's hard to forget that uh, this game was released about 20 years ago, and undoubtedly it looks it. It doesn't look terrible, because at this time, PC game graphics were really starting to take off. But something that is evident just there, having watched it back, is how I despair of using the keys A and D for acceleration and deceleration. Now, the animations on these trains are very good. Certainly, I'd say the only game that approached it at the time was Aaron's Trains. Yes, I am emphasizing the Z on the end. But that one was a bit more interactive as games go, and I think I'd probably have preferred to be playing that than this, but I've lost my copy of Trains for the time being. Now, I'm coming into the station, and uh, to be perfectly honest, I mistimed it. As you can see, I've jammed the emergency brake on, and I'm now trying to smooth things out so that I don't have a load of uh, rampant commuters coming up to my cab door saying, Oh, what bloody hell, why are you not stopping Smilvle? But I hope I've done okay. Looks respectable from here. Uh, uh, oh, maybe not. Yeah, better get moving, otherwise these road traffic people are going to be pretty pissed at me. So, let's go. What I will say is that the wheels are very nicely animated for 2001. But certain other things aren't quite so well animated. I mean, if you look at the little fence here, it looks as if it's over the line. Like, in real life, the train would probably... Well, it probably would roll over that, but it still would be something that the chief engineer wouldn't be terribly happy about. 
needless to say, train operators wouldn't be. Now I'm coming into this station here. The platforms look really short, far too short for this. I don't know if it's an eight car or a 12 car consist, but uh, needs must. So I'm drawing up to the end of the platform now, trying to make the most use of what little length there is. And we're leaving our passengers off again. No indication, as before, as to whether or not they've loaded or unloaded successfully. Just take a blind stab at it. Oh. Okay, well that's activity completed rather abruptly. And it actually gives us an evaluation, which is decent, actually, for 2001. And I speeded for all of four seconds. Overall, not bad. So, on to something else. Now, I'm feeling in a Japanese mood. But, but, I don't know. Maybe I should try something a bit closer to home with the Flying Scotsman. I mean, it's not every day you get to drive such a historic engine. Anyway, we're getting ready to go. And uh, it says it's easy. I'll find a way to mess up, and uh, I think I already have, because the engine has set off and I've not made a single bit of input to its operation. Wonderfully animated in a sort of early millennium kind of way, but it does look somewhat like the real deal, and this does look very much like England in autumn, I suppose. Like the controls are nicely done, it looks very nice in the cab overall. Again, in a 2001 kind of way, although I will be honest, it does look quite blocky. So, yeah, it's a, it's a bit of a difficult one to recommend, really, because I've gotten used to seeing train controls in simulations be done much better. Uh, that's probably a bit harsh to try and measure a game from 2001 to games that are still being developed for in 2022. But we're setting off at a pedestrian pace. Uh, I think this Flying Scotsman isn't flying so much as just pacing. It's at 15 miles an hour. That would be like looking at it going on one of those private railway things where trains don't seem to go very fast at all. But what I do like about NSTS is that they do the interiors of the carriages and there's plenty of time to admire them. As you can see, the train is not going anywhere particularly fast. Well, several hours later, we seem to be moving at somewhat more urgent a pace, going about 40-ish now, things a bit too blurry, or rather more accurately, my eyesight's gone a bit too rubbish to actually read this clearly. But it's going at a nice pace, and it looks quite pastoral in its own way, looking at a green engine and some wooden carriages going through the English countryside. Very good, but what I am finding myself doing is fighting against the controls an awful lot. So I'm not sure if I'd find steam train driving particularly pleasurable, uh, for want of a better expression. But the flyby animations are really good. I do quite enjoy them. Uh, it's not to say, however, that uh, there are other games that can't do it just as well, if not better. Now, I'm flying through a station where it seems as if the trains can only call in one direction. So I don't know if, uh, if you're heading to one end of the line, if you simply got to jump on and then jump off at some other place. But we'll see. Now, as you can see, I'm really fighting against the reverser there. It doesn't seem to want to play ball at all. I'm dragging away at it and it's just, it's going in the opposite direction. It's just... <laughs> It's it's decided it's smooth and it's sticking there now. Uh, 
and it's just going further and further back towards neutral, that's not necessarily a good way to attain progress. Gosh, this may be a long journey. Well, we seem to be making more storming progress now. I think we're doing around 90-ish. And I think I may have actually been caught unawares because I'm fairly certain that's the station I was supposed to be calling at and have failed to call at. Yep, I can try to apply the emergency brake, but it doesn't even want to apply. So obviously have to reduce the regulator and uh, hopefully that will mean I can apply the brakes. But to be perfectly honest, I may as well just carry on to the next station now and uh, organise a horse and cart to carry the passengers back to the station I was supposed to call at. Oh gosh, I've, I've not done terribly well in terms of customer satisfaction today. I may as well be honest here. And yeah, I may as well power on to the next station. I think that sums up my thoughts on MSTS in terms of gameplay. It's it's old fashioned now and in its own way quite frustrating to play at the best of times. So what if this game is in your garage? Well, yes, you can run MSTS today. However, you need to run it in Windows XP SP2 compatibility mode and as an admin, install it somewhere other than your C drive, patch it to version 1.4, link in the description, and you need to be running an NVIDIA card in this day and age, or else a vintage Intel or ATI graphics setup. But should you? Honestly, no. There are better alternatives out there that are more up to date, I'm thinking TSW, which I got for free on Epic Games, or even Train Sim 22, and the minute you buy that on Steam, it will always update to the latest version. I bought it when it was TS 2012, and uh, you know I've got all my expansion packs still tied to it. So those are the alternatives. And that leaves me with a bit of a quandary as to what to do with this train simulator. At the moment, you could buy it from CEX for £2.50, but quite honestly, I think that £2.50 would be better spent going towards TSW, which I think is a fiver on Epic Games. Also, what to do now? Well, I could get 10p for it, but I'd have to spend £1.70 on the bus fare to get to the nearest CEX store. So... For the time being, it goes on the pile, but that pile is a scrap heap, if you'll excuse the railway-based pun. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed watching this, as I've had my fun and games making this, and uh, I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching. Ta-ta!